One of the first videos I did on this channel that really took off was about cases that went cold but were solved years or sometimes even decades later. I've always found these cases interesting and apparently I'm not alone. As sad as it is to see a case go unsolved for so long, it's always nice to see justice finally served. Today's case certainly falls into that category. I heard about it a few weeks ago and wanted to share it with all of you. This is the story of Marlene Major. So before we get into it, just a note on names. Some of the sources that discuss this case, including her Wikipedia page, refer to Marlene by her maiden name, Oaks. The name Marlene Oaks is also on her tombstone. I decided to refer to her by her married name, Marlene Major, because that was her name when she died and I wanted to minimize confusion. But if you come across a source that lists her as Marlene Oaks, just know that they are the same person. Helen Marlene Major was 25 years old when she disappeared from her home in the small town of Verona, Kentucky in 1980. At the time, Marlene was married to a Rhode Island native named Bill Major. The couple had been married for about nine years and had two children. Son Donald was eight and daughter Lalana was four. On the night of October 11th, Bill Major dropped the children off at a neighbor's house. He told the neighbor that Marlene had left him for a man named Glenn St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire was a friend of the couple's and lived on their property. He also worked with Bill from time to time, though I'm not sure exactly what kind of work they did. But around 3 a.m., Glenn saw Bill at his trailer and wasn't sure what was going on. He asked Bill where Marlene and the kids were, and Bill told him that Marlene had left him and taken the kids with her. Their kids' clothing had also been removed from their closets. Glenn immediately knew something was wrong. Bill and Marlene had been having trouble in their marriage, but Glenn knew Marlene would never leave without her kids, who were actually very much accounted for. Over the next few days, Bill sold and gave away a lot of his things, including his guns. There are contradicting reports on who exactly reported Marlene missing. Some sources said it was Bill, but most said it was actually Glenn. Once she was reported missing, Bill also told police that she had left him. Once Marlene was reported missing, investigators began searching the house. They noticed Marlene's car was missing, and I assume they noticed that the kids' clothes were missing, even though the kids were accounted for. But almost everything else seemed to be in place. Most of Marlene's personal items were still there, including prescription medications she picked up a week earlier. There was no evidence of a struggle and no evidence of foul play at all. In the days after Marlene's disappearance, both Bill and Glenn were questioned. As it turned out, Glenn and Marlene's friendship was more than just a friendship. Bill had not only condoned this relationship, but apparently actually encouraged them to be together. It's not clear why he did this, but there has been speculation he let Marlene have an affair to keep her happy so she wouldn't leave. Bill was rumored to be having affairs as well. Glenn also showed police Marlene's diaries. She'd given them to him before she disappeared in order to help keep them safe. I assume she'd also given him permission to show them to police if anything happened to her. Glenn also showed police at least one of the weapons Bill had given him after Marlene's disappearance. According to Marlene's diaries, she had witnessed Bill molesting their son Donald and had threatened to go to police. The day she disappeared, Marlene told her sister that she had a proof of the molestation and that if anything happened to her, the information would go to police. She also told her sister she wanted a divorce from Bill. Bill also reportedly told Glenn St. Hilaire that if Marlene ever left him, he would shoot her, decapitate her, and knock her teeth out so it would be harder to identify her. At some point in the investigation, I believe this was also mentioned in her diaries, police learned that Bill had been convicted of child molestation in 1975. All the circumstantial evidence against Bill was stacking up, but with no body and no physical evidence, there wasn't much police could do. Bill was offered a polygraph after Marlene's disappearance, but refused to take it. 
About a week after she disappeared, he moved back to Rhode Island with his kids. He remarried in either 1981 or 1982. On November 29, 1981, hunters on a farm near the Major's old house found a human skull. The skull was severed and toothless, probably toothless because the jaw had been removed entirely. There was also a bullet hole in the top. Although police couldn't perform DNA testing at the time, they believed this was the skull of Marlene Major. They searched lakes and countryside in the area after the skull was found, but never found any more remains or evidence. Meanwhile, life in the Major household wasn't going well. Donald and Lalana suffered both physical and sexual abuse at the hands of their father. Bill would tell Lalana that he would hurt Donald if she misbehaved and vice versa. The kids feared for their lives. Finally, the kids told their stepmother about the abuse. Bill continued to threaten them to keep them from telling anyone else, but their stepmother did eventually go to police. In 1984, Bill was convicted of first-degree sexual assault and sentenced to 15 years in prison. His children were taken in by Marlene's parents, their grandparents. Bill's second wife divorced him at some point, but he remarried while in prison. He ended up serving 11 years of his 15-year sentence. After he was released, he was extradited back to Kentucky to face more child molestation charges from molesting his children while the family lived there. Investigators hoped these charges would put Bill back in prison. They couldn't prove that he killed Marlene, but highly suspected it. But the statute of limitations had expired for the child molestation charges, so he was let go. He ended up moving to Fairhaven, Massachusetts with his third wife in 1996. At least I assume it's Massachusetts because that's the only Fairhaven I could find close to Rhode Island. Like I said earlier, while all this was going on, Donald and Lalana lived with their grandparents. They also believed their mother had abandoned them. One day, a teenage Lalana asked her grandmother, Lorraine Oakes, Marlene's mother, where Marlene was. Lorraine shot Lalana when she said Marlene was dead, had been for a while, and that Bill was the one who had killed her. She didn't have proof of this, but like police, highly suspected it. After this, Lalana became curious about her mother's case. She talked to her father first. She promised to leave him alone about the subject and not go to police if he would just tell her where her mother's body was. Bill replied by telling her, if you ever think I will tell you what I did with her body, you're crazy. But far from being discouraged, Lalana seemed to take this as a challenge. In 2000, she started looking into her mother's case files. She read her mother's diaries and learned about the molestation, witnessing it, and the talk of divorce. She also found out about the skull, something she'd never been told before. In 2001, Police began reinvestigating Marlene's case. After the case was reopened, or at least revived, the skull was looked at again by a forensic anthropologist. The skull was of a white female in her 20s or maybe early 30s, though this might have been information police already knew. In addition to the bullet hole, there was evidence that someone had removed the head from the rest of the body with a sharp object. The jaw had also been removed with a sharp object, possibly the same one that had been used to remove the head. The forensic anthropologist concluded that the death was a homicide. At first, investigators believed the skull was too degraded for DNA testing, but advances in technology gave them one more option, mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondria are structures within cells that convert energy from food into something that the rest of the cells can use. They also have their own DNA in them called mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is passed to children from their mothers. This test would allow DNA from Lalana to be compared with DNA from the skull to see if it was Marlene's skull. Kentucky officials agreed to pay for the test, and it was carried out. The test was a match. Lalana and the person the skull belonged to were mother and daughter. 
This was Marlene Major's skull. So now it was confirmed that Marlene Major wasn't just missing, but dead. But now investigators had to find out who killed her. They suspected Bill, of course, but needed evidence. At some point in the investigation, they were able to get in contact with James Major, Bill's father. According to James, Bill had confessed to murdering Marlene in a phone call back in 1996. According to James Major, Bill said he killed Marlene by shooting her six times, four times in the torso and twice in the face. They were in Marlene's car at the time, so he drove the car into the woods and dumped it in a sinkhole. Then he dumped her car in the nearby Ohio River. At the time of this phone call, Bill had still been in prison, though he would be released shortly after. When he made this confession, James pointed out that the call was probably being recorded, but as it turned out, it actually wasn't. Because there was no solid evidence of this call, and because there was already hostility between Bill and James Major, investigators couldn't use this against him. But they did have another idea. James Major agreed to have his phone tapped and call Bill again so this conversation could be recorded, a conversation that would hopefully end in a taped confession. At first, Bill was evasive, wondering out loud if this had been a setup, but eventually he started to talk. I could only find portions of this audio, but I will play what I could find for you now. I did get them from different sources, so there will be cuts and it might be out of order. I just wanted you to hear what I could find of this conversation because I think it's pretty telling. Christ, the least you could be decent enough to say where you dumped it. I'll tip it where the, where the body is if you let me know. And then she's going to bounce it right back on me again. Then I'll have some Kentucky cops coming up here to arrest me and take me back down there again. They didn't get you yet. It's been too long. There's no such thing as two wants. She pulled a gun on you. You took it off her and shot her, right? Yeah, that's one story. That that was your story. That's what you told me. But you told me you killed her. No, at the time I was in jail and I was pretty well upset. I keep getting calls from Lolana. And she wants to know where her mother is so that she can get the bones and put them in a casket and have closure. Yeah, and put me in jail for life. You have pulled off the perfect crime, haven't you? No, I wouldn't call it perfect. No. Because if a crime was perfect, nobody would ever know about it. Don't you even feel bad for killing her? I don't have any kind of conscience about anything. Well, you are one tough bastard to think that the son I raised could do such a thing. In the summer of 2001, Bill Major was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. He faced the death penalty. While being questioned by police, Bill gave the following version of events. On the night of October 11th, Bill and Marlene were arguing in Marlene's car because she wanted to leave and take the kids. The argument escalated and Marlene eventually pulled a gun on Bill. He took the gun away from her and she got upset and started screaming. So he fired the gun until it was empty. He left her body in the car and took the kids to the neighbor's house. Then he took her body to a nearby farm, dumped it in a sinkhole, and threw the gun in a pond. He also told police he dumped Marlene's car in the Ohio River. He drew police a map to help find the rest of her remains, but to this day, none of her other remains, other than the skull or any other evidence, has been found. In August 2003, Bill was convicted of first-degree murder and tampering with evidence. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after eight years. As far as I know, he is still in prison and has never been granted parole. His conviction was reversed in 2005 and he was granted a retrial, but the jury in that retrial also convicted him. So that's all I have for you today on the murder of Marlene Major. There's usually more aftermath in these cases, but there doesn't seem to be much here. I couldn't really find any updates. 
There is still plenty we don't know, but overall, this seems to be a pretty straightforward open and shut case, even if it did take a while to be solved. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.